Nearly a year ago now, I played Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon on my channel. There are a few videos there on the front page for you to check out if you're interested in the game. I have recently been contacted by the developers, so have given me some game keys to give away. And one of those game keys is for the following game. Tainted Grail Conquest, a unique, replayable, story-driven hybrid between a deck building, a roguelike and an RPG game. Explore the ever-changing maps, fight with deadly enemies, and learn what happened to the cursed island of Avalon. Now, I did purchase this copy, and I'm giving away the game key. At the end of the video, I'll let you know how you can claim it. King Arthur promised us safety on these shores. Instead, we found stormy seas, rocks like shark teeth, and treacherous mists. Those few who manage to land will be set by hunger, cold, and nightmares born of weirdness. My people settled around a gnarled old statue. Though we did not understand its origin or purpose, the enemy seemed to avoid it. That was good enough. For a time. In the end, the winds of weirdness only grew stronger, and the statue failed to protect the settlement. There was fear, despair, and then... nothingness. As reality melted around us. Okay, well, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of roguelike games, and I've not played that many deck building games either. So I didn't know whether I was going to like this game or not, and, but, you know, I give it a go. I've been playing for the last couple of hours on a different save, and you know what, guys? I am so surprised. I love it. I absolutely love it. And you know what? I think you're going to love it too. You awake to nothingness. All you can sense is darkness, a dense mass of emptiness so total that even your thoughts disintegrate. Then you hear whistling. An eternity seems to pass before something materializes in the darkness with you. Something angry. Damn it, you weren't supposed to land here. Damn it all to hell. The creature pauses for a moment, clearly weighing up some options. He taps a finger against one of his horns. Now, listen, there's a lot to do and no time to waste. What can we try? Perfect. You can speak and yes, these are really great questions. No easy answers, though. Sorry to disappoint. Now, listen closely. Are you ready? Brace yourself, because what I'm going to tell you is rather important. You're gone. Your village is gone. Everything you've ever known is gone. Yes, everything and everyone, including your very own self, as I mentioned already. However... The creature taps two hooves together, marking a dramatic pause. There is a small chance an infinitesimally tiny chance, really, to bring it all back. You were saved from death in order to keep your reality from falling apart. But, well, it's not going to be easy. First, we must ensure that you're in good enough condition to actually do anything. Which brings us to the problematic part your body. You squint down at your feet and hands in the darkness. They seem perfectly fine. Oh no. Oh, goodness me, no. That's just an illusion. I had to get you here somehow, didn't I? Otherwise, you'd start talking about the afterlife and whatnot. And this, my friend, is not an afterlife. This is a total mess. But let's see what we can do. Here. This little trick should get us started at least. Now, if like me, 
when you're playing the game you come across some issues on this particular screen where the the screen would just freeze and you couldn't do anything else but just you know like control alt delete out of the game there is a little fix for it and all you have to do is go back into the options and uncheck the box to show the uh, intro video or the cinematic and that fixes it but you do have to reboot your system guys when you first play the game you are locked in to just playing the weird hunter <laughs> i love that name weird hunter but all the rest of the characters such as the apostate the sentinel the zealot etc will become unlocked as you progress in the game and it doesn't take that long it wasn't that long until i was able to um unlock the summoner and then i think it was the sent the zealot thing one of them anyway one of that shoots a bow <laughs> so don't worry it doesn't take that long every different class will have an ultimate ability and a passive skill uh, for this one every hit you deal leaves a hunter's mark four hunters mark make an enemy vulnerable well it seems your soul isn't strong enough to be picky about its vessel yet don't worry you'll grow now we need to see whether my little trick actually worked the goat weaves his fingers in an intricate series of gestures with a final flourish, he conjures a terrifying creature into the emptiness. Aha, here we go. This is a powerful Avalonian warlock. But don't worry, he's not really here. Not in the truest sense. Your goal here is simple. Fight. Show me that you've got what it takes. And this is where you get led into an intro. And as you can see, this beastie has a lot of health. And I don't think that you're meant to beat it. If you can, and you can beat that guy, go ahead, guys. Where your hometown once was, a lone man sits among the remains. He doesn't notice you. Only when you walk right up to him, he turns his blank stare toward you. It's not my farmhold, is it? I'm from up north, the land of fog. I... I don't know what happened. At least that's one thing you have in common. A creature that looked like a goat told me I'd wake up in a strange place, and that I'd find someone in need of my help there. The man looks at you for a moment. I've already made some preparations and settled in one of the tents here. I can't offer you much at the moment, though. This place is... different. But you? I've seen an enormous creature out there, a golem of stone. The evil energy it emits is beyond anything I've ever felt. I'd say getting rid of that beast would be a good start. As far as I'm aware, um, this game uses the same law, the same background, the same kind of concept and everything as Tainted Grail, Ball of Avalon. It's just that this is a roguelite deck builder game instead. And this little area is our village, and at the moment, these buildings are... Right now, this building is an abandoned ruin. However, during your travels, you might find someone who'd be willing to settle in here and help you with your quest. As I was saying, they're empty at the moment, but as you go around your maps and level up, you can find different NPCs, and they'll all come and uh, live in your village. So here you can buy some healing mixtures, ask to be healed, uh, pick a quest card for your next journey, etc. And other NPCs will bring different options and different things. I think we get a blacksmith here and some other bits and pieces. Now out here is your map. And that is where we're going to start. I caught you before you went out all and you're lonesome. Our mutual friend already told you to slay the stone golem. Perfect. The golem is just a start, though. Even if you do manage to kill it, the further you go, the more dangerous the road will become. And since we're talking roads, you're walking within the weirdness now, and it's dangerous. Take these candles, light them up, and try not to let this damned fog close around you. Got it? Oh, and before you face the golem, look around the area. 
there's a blacksmith nearby who might be willing to join your village. Finding people like him will be crucial for your survival. Each one will be helpful in a different way. And with that, I'm out. Good luck. You can't really, really tell what the hell is going on on this map unless you use one of those candles. Uh, we're going to pop into here and we're going to use them. We're starting off with eight and two healing mixtures. And now the map has come a little bit more clearer. We do have a mini map in the top right hand corner. Um, and down here, that is the burn level hive. So the weird candle is burning bright. Weirdness is repelled completely. So let's have a look and see what this map has to offer us. Right, it looks like we've got something down here to beat. Okay, we're going to do our first battle. Still got the three energy down the right hand side there, so I'm going to start off with a block. One block protects only from one hit. If there's more than one enemy or the enemy is going to do two hits, you can normally tell here. Up the top, the enemy is preparing for a special attack, so he might be doing a double attack. Let's see if he does. The overhead swing will hit for four to six reduce enemies armor by 10 until the end of combat so i do that next and then i would do the attack let's see what happens oh hello you got a weird card forces of weirdness insert them into your hand their effects depend on your weird candles burn level use it or be ready for the consequences of not playing it so with these cards guys they have different effects on them and as you see with this one we can reduce the damage of all enemies by 20% this turn but if we don't use it this turn it's going to increase random cards cost by one um i think i'm going to use it because reducing the damage of enemies by 20% sounds good to me now again i'm going to block and i've got one left so i'm going to attack again and as you can see here his base damage and armor are going down. He's preparing for a special attack. And he's an infected human. This enemy's shape and the pulsation of its body suggests that you should be prepared for an explosive surprise. Okay, so we've got something different there. Enemy intends to attack everyone on the battlefield and bluff. Um, in that case, then I'm gonna stun you, matey boy. I'm going to attack you. Oh! He pooped! <laughs> and he's left behind a flesh eating magnet. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, we're going to block that one. We've got two left. So I can do the overhead swing to reduce the armor and the attack. uh broad reach is a good one the next hit does a hundred percent damage and get another attack in and we should finish that one and as you can see that our level has gone up we've got some xp points and we get to pick a new card Ooh. deal one hit for 100 percent damage reduce the enemy's armor by 20 until the end of combat stun all enemies with no or negative armor or block the next hit of a chosen enemy. I like that one. And pick a new passive skill. Slow thinker. Whenever you play two or less cards in a turn, your first hit the next turn deals 400 damage. Increase your armor by 25. Sounds better to me. Or at the start of each turn, gain two ultimate. I'm going to go for the armor. Now I can see an um, exclamation mark on the map. So I'm going to try and head over there to see what that is all about. And have a look see your weird candle is burning out better use another one. Oh, too late <laughs> damn okay we're straight in with one of those gain 10 percent damage this turn if not played next turn lose 50 armor oh i'm gonna play that then <laughs> now i'm going to um block now then enemies preparing for a special attack we've seen this item before but we haven't seen this one he's a sleeper and he wakes up after absorbing blood of its fallen ally. 
better let it sleep in its petrified shell. So we're going to attack this one. I'm going to move with the overhead swing. And we're out of moves. Um, I'm going to block again. Next hit does 100%. Nice. Uh, block again. Awesome. Overhead again. On attack. Oh, and now he's working up. Okay, so we're going to block. Deal one hit for 812. Reduce the enemy's armor by 20 until the end of combat. Let's do that. And this one, small strikes, is mainly for random enemies, like more than one enemy on the map, but we're going to use it here as well. Ew, we got another one. One block protects only from one hit. Remember to pay attention to enemy intents. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Reduce arm of all enemies by 10 or draw two cards less. I'm going to use it. Um, intense to use a normal attack, a strong attack and a buff. But we're going to stun that little fella there. Hey, is he still wanting to do the same thing? Ooh. Shield break. And the small strikes should hit both. And a block. It's only blocking from the one. We do have a choice if we wanted to use two and block both of them. Um, we have a look. See, I'm going to use that on that one. Oh, nice. Use that on that one. And I should take out that one. Absolutely awesome. Now. Blacksmith. Hello. A song breaks through the slithering of the weirdness. I have no hope, no hope, no gold. Mighty spot, misty morning, cold. Not long afterwards, you come upon a man wearing a blacksmith's apron. Boy, traveler. Wanna buy a good anvil? It's all I have, I'm afraid. Me home, you see, went poof. One minute there. Next minute, gone. I found myself here with this lump of iron for company. I swear to God, it started talking to me not long ago. Oh, no. I left that life behind quite a while ago. All I'm interested in these days are rune stones. Yes, containers for the magic of giants. Even though you'll usually find them broken, they're extremely powerful. You can use them to enhance your weapons or armor. They will influence your abilities in different ways. Also, when you find three of the same kind and rarity, you'll be able to fuse them together. This will make them even more powerful. Here, let me give you some. You can try it later. I'd say that since you know what you're looking for, you should be able to find more of them out there. By the way, Okay, so the blacksmith deals with rune stones. Now these can be very, very helpful indeed, and some of them not as much. But if you, and they have like different, I'm trying to say, bloody fiber today is terrible, guys. You probably notice. If you use it in a weapon slot, it'll have a different effect than if you use it in an armor slot. There we go. I got it out, <laughs> and that is for most of them. And this one here in the armor slot would increase maximum HP by 30. And this one, I'm not too sure. It says that every turn increases everyone's armor by five. I mean, does that mean the enemies as well? Not too sure about that so far. Uh, in the weapon slot, in the first turn of combat, draw one additional card on the armor slot for four HP. I think we're okay for now. 
You want me in your village? Well, you must first prove you can take care of yourself. Kill ten bears and... <laughs> oh, just fooling for pity's sake. What would I need ten bears for? Show me the way. I actually like that. I like that because in most, you know, RPGs you play like Skyrim and all that stuff. Um, NPCs are always sending off on some stupid bloody quest. Kill 15 of that, 10 of this, 8 of this. That was good humour there. I appreciate the good humour. Now, each time that you die and get resurrected, you start back at the village. And each time you come onto the map, it's totally different. You'll have different things on the map. Um, different encounters. Oh, okay, look. This is the... Uh, I don't know what this one is. <laughs> There's lots of different things. That looks like a good kind of a legendary encounter. Oh, this could be one of our golems. We won't be able to win it, guys, but I'll give you a look anyway. Yes, it is. It's our awakened golem. And I can look at his bloody health. There's no chance that we can do this. We've actually just started the game. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly speed it up. And my character's going to die. And I'll show you what happens. Within the darkness, you hear a familiar voice. Finally. Now we can start the cycle of proper rebirth. A different voice appears out of nowhere, and its owner is nowhere to be seen. Be gone. It is calm. Inhumanly calm. Can I invite you to the table? You see a hooded figure waiting for you by the table. A chessboard sits upon it, the game in progress. As you take the free chair, you realize the creature has no face. A white skull leers from the shadows of the hood. A human skeleton draped with robes. I admit, I'm not used to showing up in person whenever people die. That's too much hassle with adjusting my presence to your current imaginations and whatnot. But let's say that your case is special. Yes. And yes to that other question, too. You're technically dead. But there are certain things that prevent you from, let's say, being properly gone. Recent events had consequences going beyond the intentions that sparked them. And now we're stuck in this unfortunate predicament because time, as you know it, is irreversibly corrupted. The past and the future are happening at the same time. All that you see is an echo of things that already happened or eventually will. Presented without inherent sense, without purpose, without any logic. You see four figures on the board changing shapes into forms of beasts and a moment later, they dissolve into dust. You must slay the guardians and keep slaying them until you reach the source conjuring them out of the weirdness. Their deaths will make you stronger. This will lead you to your destination. That was death, guys. <laughs> so each run can be lost. Of course, it's a roguelite. But part of the accumulated power is transformed into new possibilities for the upcoming runs. And that was our game progress. Two villagers rescued and souls saved because we didn't do much of the math on that one. We discovered some passives, there's a beastry, there's factions, there's NPCs, there's all sorts of information you can find on there. And this is where we do the roguelike part of it and we would start over again. And you get to choose a blessing, start with 200 wealth, 
a random consumable, two more weird candles. And you can choose, or you don't have to choose one at all. And this, if you've unlocked any of the characters, is where you would start again with a different uh, class, not character, class. And as you can see now, even though we've started again, we have a blacksmith. And there he is. We have unlocked the blacksmith. That is kind of cool. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here for today. Um, I've given you a very good overview of what the game is about. I don't want to spoil too much of the lore, too much of the story. The voice acting is superb. Um, everything I like about it, I just, lo I just love it. I like everything about it. I can't even speak today. I apologize, guys, but my fibro is kicking my ass. And it has been doing for the last week. But I'm trying my best. So, do you want to get your hands on the game key for this game? If you do, leave a comment down below. You must be subscribed. Like the video. Leave me a comment telling me why you want the game. And that's all you have to do. And I'll put all the one people who have commented into a random generator. And I'll pick one out. And I'll get in touch with you and let you know if you've won or not. And that's all you have to do, guys. We have one game key. Thanks very much to the devs. If you're like me, guys, and you absolutely adore the soundtrack to both the games, Tainted Grail and Ball of Avalon, you can get some of the music from the Conquest game over on Bandcamp. And it's only seven euros. Or if you wish to, pay a little bit more. I did. It's well worth it, guys.